in our quest to become better writers, in our quest to write with more fluidity, with more rhythm, with more expression, we are going to use pronouns. Pronouns substitute for nouns, and it gives us a little, an option to write our sentences with more variety. If we didn't have pronouns, we'd really sound like robots. We would construct our sentences in the following way. Eric walks to the liquor store. Eric buys a bottle of Coke. Eric returns home and drinks his bottle of Coke. In those sentences, we're always repeating the proper noun Eric. Instead, we could have used pronouns. Pronoun means for a noun. In other words, a pronoun substitutes for a noun. And by substituting for a noun, we can write with more variety. Eric walks to the liquor store. He buys a bottle of Coke and he returns home. That sentence has much more rhythm than the preceding ones did. Now the pronoun stands for something that came before it. The thing that came before it is called the antecedent. Anti means before. Something comes before. The pronoun is referring to something that comes before it. The problem is when we're speaking, we'll often start off a sentence and we forgot what the subject is. And when we use that pronoun, we use a pronoun that's incorrect. Now here's an example of a sentence where the pronoun is correct, but it's still difficult to figure out what the antecedent is. Here's a pronoun, they. A good song, that could be the antecedent, that's the subject, lends comfort to people. But here's another noun, and that's another option for the antecedent. Now there's a confusion about what is the antecedent. However, there's no confusion because here they is plural in number, and people here is plural in number as well whereas a good song is singular number. Therefore, they refers to people and not to a good song. A good song lends comfort to people so that they feel less alone. Now, sometimes there is a shift of person, which means that the, we want to refer to a general third person, but instead of using a third person pronoun they, we will use in common English or in spoken English, we will use the, the phrase you or the, the word you. The problem with this is that this is a personal pronoun, whereas what is really ne ne necessary to refer to people is a general third person pronoun, they. The next problem that people have is a confusion of what the antecedent was. Again, this often happens. We'll start off a sentence, and then in the second part of the sentence, we'll forget what we're referring to. The peanut jar was empty, but Bobo was tired of nibbling them away. Here's the pronoun. What is it referring to? Well, there is only one option. It can only refer to the peanut jar, but this no makes no sense. We can't nibble on a peanut jar. Obviously, what's being referred to by them, which is plural, are the peanuts within the peanut jar. To correct this sentence, we'd really have to rewrite the sentence and refer to peanuts in the first half of the sentence. This is more of a pet peeve of mine. It's the pronoun this. Often, people will start off a sentence saying, this is the result of, or this means that, etc. But what is it referring to in the previous sentence? The space shuttle came crashing to Earth. This is a result of? What is it a result of? An accident? The laws of gravity? Really, the sentence needs to be clarified with a new noun referring to the concept being presented in the previous sentence. The same thing with a sentence which uses which. The plane was grounded by a strike, which is what we had expected all along. What was expected? The plane, the grounding, it's not clear. In the case of using this or which, it's often necessary to rewrite the sentence in order to match the pronouns with the antecedents correctly.